In this short video, I'm going to give you some hints and tips on how to analyze and interpret the graphs that you'll meet in some of your assignments. So first of all, let's have a look at the basic structure of a graph. This is an old friend, blood glucose levels. Um, it's actually an American graph, so uh, the measurement is milligrams per deciliter, not the uh, millimoles that we've been used to. It doesn't matter. The left-hand axis on a graph shows what you are measuring. So this is the thing that you've been uh, measuring, and along the bottom of the graph, you have the factor, which is called the independent variable, which is, in this case, time. There's also other information on the graph as well. You can see there's a dotted line across the middle, just above the 80 figure there. Uh, that's just the normal level of blood glucose. So that's rather like the dotted line that we used on our negative feedback diagrams. You've obviously got the red line, which is showing how blood glucose levels change uh, during and after your eating. And then down the bottom, between 0 and 20 minutes, you've got a pink bar just showing when the meal was actually taking place. So what sort of things might you be asked about that graph? Well, one thing you might get asked is describe the changes in blood glucose levels shown in the graph. And if you're asked that, basically you need to break down the curve on the graph into manageable chunks. So whenever anything changes, describe the segment up until that point. And so in this particular graph, you would break it down into segments and you would say that, for instance, blood glucose rises after five minutes. You would say how much by, so you would say, well, it rises from a value of about 75 milligrams per deciliter and it peaks at about 143 milligrams per deciliter at 30 minutes. So bring in the measurements. Don't just say it goes up and then it goes down. So give the times, give the values. What happens next? Well, it gradually reduces and it reduces back to around about 80 milligrams per deciliter at 95 minutes. And then finally, it returns to the normal level by 105 minutes. So what you've done is you've chopped up that graph into four sections dealing with the changes within the graph. Notice you are not expected or asked to explain what's happening. If it's a described question, that's what you do. On the other hand, if your luck's really out, you might be asked to explain or comment on the changes in blood glucose, but you'll usually be asked within a specific time period rather than for the whole graph. So the question might say, explain or comment on the changes in blood glucose shown by the graph between 20 and 40 minutes. And this is where you can see it's going up, peaks, and then it goes back down. The question is, why does it do that? Well, best way to, to deal with it is to start at the left-hand side and deal with the events in a logical order and show your understanding. So you'd say, for instance, the first thing, that simple sugars begin to be absorbed into the bloodstream from five minutes after eating. So these would be sugars that don't need to be digested, they're monosaccharides within the food mass. What happens next? Well, uh, this actually triggers the release of insulin. Where does the insulin come from? 
Well, it comes from the beta cells in the pancreas. Where are they in the pancreas? So you're explaining still, they're in the islets of Langerhans. What does insulin do? Well, excess glucose is removed from the blood by liver and muscle cells. And as we know, it's converted into glycogen and fats. And if you really want to show off, um, you could actually say by the process of glycogenesis. What does that do? Causes a fall in blood glucose levels after 30 minutes. Now that's a fairly straightforward graph, just showing one thing. But in practice, um, at this rather higher level that we're working at, you'll actually usually get more than one piece of information. And you'll be asked to actually compare what's happening and say if there's a relationship between them. Let's have a look at an example. So what we've got here is blood glucose red concentration in the blue bar, the blue line, and insulin concentration in the red line. Look for the relationships. Use your understanding. Use your knowledge. For instance, one thing that sticks out a mile at one hour is that blood glucose peaks at one hour and insulin levels climb sharply. So fairly straightforward. Don't give more than the question asks. If it says describe or explain what happens between one to two hours, don't waste time giving information before or after that time. Sometimes you'll find that the data is split into more than one graph. Like this. But you should find that they all share the same time scale. And the idea is the same. You're looking for correlations, you're looking for comparisons, you're looking for relationships. And for an explain or comment question, you're identifying reasons for those changes, for those differences, or for those relationships. Let's just round it off by looking at a further example. This graph compares the blood glucose concentration in somebody who does not have type 1 diabetes and somebody who does. And they've both been given a drink of glucose at time zero. So that's the left hand axis. And you might be asked two things. And I want you to practice this. So describe the changes in blood glucose levels in the diabetic and non-diabetic individuals during the first 60 minutes. Second question, explain the changes in blood glucose levels in the diabetic and non-diabetic individual during the first 60 minutes. Work from the graph, just jot down a few notes for yourself. I'll leave it on the screen just for a minute, but I'm done now, so I'll leave you to consider how you would answer that question.